So the parties are talking a lot today about what's best for families when it comes to child care, tax cuts and more. Let's debate what's on offer with three candidates. Mona Forte is the Liberal candidate for re-election in the riding of Ottawa Vanier. Angela McEwen is the NDP candidate in Ottawa West Nepean. And Karen Vecchio is the Conservative candidate for re-election in Elgin, Middlesex, London. Good to see you all. Thanks Thank for being here. Much. Karen Vecchio, let me start with you if I can. Uh, your leader, Andrew Scheer, today has, has gone back to the last Conservative government to, be, to reintroduce these tax credits for families uh, that the Liberals cancelled. But... Uh, let me start there. Why is he going back to the, the previous programs of the Conservative government that the Liberals had cancelled? Well, these are policies and these are programs that really impacted Canadian families. And when the Liberal government took it away, we actually had a lot of feedback from constituents, from Canadians saying, this is something that actually helped our families. So we are, have put forward a $1,000 fitness tax credit that's looking for activities under the fitness and sports. And those are refundable tax credits as well as a $500 tax credit for the arts and learning. And so those are both non -ref or both refundable tax credits. So at the end of the day, there will be more money in the pockets of many parents or, or grandparents who are helping out with some of these costs. Okay. Um, the, the fiscal situation has changed since the Conservatives were in office, obviously. So one of the questions people have is for all these tax cuts and tax credits that the Conservatives are rolling out, how are you going to pay for them? You know, some of the things is it's a lot to do with spending. One thing is we talk a lot about balancing the budget and what we want to see in the future, but it's about all the unnecessary spending. So at the end of the day, we want families to be able to make those choices, whether it's childcare, whether it's the sports that they're taking part in, but we want to make sure that families have those choices. With the fitness tax credit, all of those things at the end of the day, that will help families. But then getting rid of the carbon tax, which has a huge impact on seniors, our, our young families, our businesses and manufacturing, those are things, some Thing that we're rolling back as well and we're also putting on a GST tax credit to help all, or the GST will be removed from home heating bills to make sure that once again more money in the back in the pockets of families. All right Mona Forte your leader today announced uh, another half a billion dollars a year uh, more in funding for before and after school programs for children under the age of 10. Um, now there are governments provincial governments in this country that are relatively hostile to, to the federal government. I'm talking about Ontario, Manitoba, New Brunswick and Alberta. Uh, they may stand in the way of these programs. So how will you help provinces roll these programs out in the face of that kind of resistance from provincial governments? Well first I want to say thank you for having us today and uh, also I'm very excited with what we're offering today to create those child spaces for after uh, school or before and after school care. Parents have told us and even I as a parent that they're juggling with responsibilities and child care and they need support to make sure that the the kids are taken care of while they finish work so this is an incentive built on the other incentives that we have proposed the Canada Child Benefit which helped uh, alleviate 300,000 children out of poverty so we're building on those incentives to help families continue to grow the economy because that's what the idea is to help them support they're working and what if what if doug ford says that's not happening in ontario we well, don't, we don't we, want your, your your money we don't we'll take care of child care in ontario well we are ready to continue to work uh, in uh, with the provinces and the municipalities to support the uh, child care and invest in child care that's what families are asking at the door and these are incentives that will help angela what's the what's the ndp plan so the ndp plan is to invest right away a million or a billion dollars um, in that building a national child care plan. So uh, absolutely what was announced today by the Liberals is fantastic, it's thoughtful. Um, it addresses the needs of parents who are shift workers and have unusual hours. Um, it's hard to find spaces in some provinces for kids. Uh, not all provinces in Ontario, there's a commitment to provide spots if kids need it. So. Um, so that, that is why we need a national system. We need to sit down with the provinces and hammer out something that works. The biggest need though is for under two for infant care because it's the most expensive. And um, the Liberals did promise in 2015 that they would implement that national child care program. Um, they haven't put the money or the resources towards Prime Minister doing suggested that. today this is part of a step that will eventually get there, but we're not there yet. Well, they've been promising okay. it since 1993. Uh, so, Karen, <laughs> let, me, let, me, let me go back to you. Um, we hear about the urgent need for child care spaces. What, what's the role of government in that? If you, I mean, it's one thing for families to get money from, from a government or tax cuts, tax rebates, credits. But how do you, how do you find the spaces? If, if there's no money to create spaces, how do you get around that? Well, you know, we have, if you look across Canada, there are 
there are different needs across this country, whether it is the cost of making sure we have the proper staffing or whether we're looking at the rural or urban split. That's why we are very supportive of having options for families, making sure that families have that choice, whether it is something like a regular uh, somebody going to a house where an EA will take care of them, or whether it's in more of a, a school-like setting. There's a lot of varieties, but at the same time, families need to be able to make that choice. We know that there is a lot of need for this, but we need to make sure it's not a cookie-cutter approach because the needs that you'll find in Langley, BC are very different than what we'll find in St. John's. Uh, so we have to be very aware of that. And, and for the federal government, we have to make sure that they're actually working with the provinces. And that's something that we have not seen work out well for the last four years. So a cookie cutter approach. So no. that's a bit of a straw man. How so? But well, there's, if you ahead. want to go ahead. Oh, <laughs> but, no, but no. Hey, hang we on, have, Karen, we'll come back to you. What we have right now is, is provinces have put in place um, targeted spots. Um, you have spots for Francophone kids, you have spots for uh, First Nations, Métis, and Inuit kids. We have spots for kids that have special needs. So we don't have a cookie cutter approach. No one's proposing a cookie cutter approach. We are proposing flexibility, but what we need, the gap, where the gap is right now, is in terms of spaces and in terms of the workforce development program to, to have more workers who are qualified and to be able to pay them sufficiently. So, so one, that's what we hear from everyone. Um, one incentive uh, that I wanted to share also that was announced today is we're going to increase 25 million skills training to have educators because if we, when we create those spaces, we'll need to make sure that we have the proper training and educators on site. So this is a really holistic program that will work with the province create those 250,000 spaces in the next uh, few years and help families juggle between the fact that they need that after, before and after school uh, support. Karen, weigh in on that because the, really the conversation is about the role of government here and do, does, is the government required to build the kind of structure that Angela and Mona just talked about? How does that structure get built if the government's not involved in some way in delivering childcare services? Well, I think there's a couple ways of looking at this. First of all, we've talked about child care spaces before, and we know the Liberal record that goes back to 1993, where they said that there will be a national child care program. But we as a party really believe in parental choice. If there are spaces that need to be built, there will be the assistance that we can do through the municipalities, through the provinces. But we need to look at what what each region needs as well. And so, like I said, trying to come up with an idea, we need to make sure that Yes, there are people that will be working at nights. There'll be people working during uh, weekends and things like that. A lot of these programs that I've seen did not impact those families. I've done this for the last four years, going across the country, and I can tell you that the child care that people are expecting to get is not what this government is often offering, and that we have to really look at, as a mother of five, we really need to look at what is the flexibility for parents, and are they gonna come out with a program that helps people through the government, but doesn't actually help the families, because a lot of these families are left out. They may work shift work, they may work different things like that, and you don't find that, especially in my setting of a rural part of Canada. What's the answer we to that? Could, well, we can work with provinces and see those realities that we have on the ground. One of the incentives that we're presenting today with childcare before and after school, we also mentioned that we will try to find ways through maybe community uh, centers or other uh, uh, sets to help with the families that work later or earlier. We understand that somebody doesn't work nine to five anymore. So we need to focus on their needs and that's the program we want to settle and to put uh, towards Canadians so that we can work with the provinces and the uh, parents. Angela, what's the answer to that question? Is there, is there any other way to create, can you have a de facto national child care plan that might be, uh, that doesn't involve oversight from a federal government or funding from a federal government that, that sort of directs standards? And and still get to and still get <clears throat> still get to where you want to be, where you can. I mean, what we've seen where 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 it happens yeah. almost, I guess, organically, and it's it's the same. It's the system everybody wants. Can that happen? No. So what the that's talking about laissez-faire economics, right? That's the market will solve the problem. But here we're talking about where women have provided this care, largely women, unpaid and they've taken cost to their lifetime earnings because of that. So when you're trying to replace that unpaid labor with a market program, there's no way you're ever gonna be able to do that, right? And we should flip this and stop thinking about this as a cost and think about it as an investment. You're investing in those children, you're investing in the women who can now go work in the labor force if that's what they choose. 
and you're investing in, in pay equity. And so what we've seen is if it's a public system, if, uh, if you get the quality, you get the flexibility. If it's a private system, they're just there for profit and they, they have no incentive to provide the flexibility that we're talking about right. that okay. parents need. Karen, so go ahead, yeah. way in there. What's, what's, what's the alternative what, to, uh, your two colleagues are talking the same language really, but what's yeah, the alternative? They're speaking, they're speaking the exact same language. Um, I, I see what they're coming out with is, is pretty much the exact same. But we have these programs for the last 25 years that people have talked about and it has not suited the families yeah, themselves. Had them. year I'm ago. Hasn't been there. About, That's the problem. We, but we've talked about this since 1993, and we have not seen something. This is under the provincial jurisdiction, but ultimately, parents are part of this decision. And so if we're coming out with a program where we're saying, your children must go into this, we have to look at what's available to other families that may not want specifically that. A lot of families want to be home with their children, and that's why we put in these maternity benefits and parental benefits that are tax-free, helping families so that at the beginning of their lives, that parents can be involved as well. We have to look at this as a family thing. We talk a lot about women. I was the chair of Status of Women, so of course I'm extremely supportive. But we need to see what families look like. There are a lot of non-traditional families as well, where the man may be home, or it's a same-sex couple. There's lots of different things that we need to look at. So we need right, to but make. But, it you, but, years, but you can build. You can build. You can build a system to uh, respond to all of those differences, can't you? It's not well, boutique I'm, tax cuts that I believe will help families uh, the way they are right now. I believe that uh, with a robust plan to grow the economy and help. Helping families take their the, creating those jobs, we need to support them in the childcare, in affordable housing, in different means. And I believe that the Liberal plan is the one that we can continue to move on and help those families continue to build and grow our economy. Karen, back to you, and then Angela to finish. Yeah. Go, go ahead, Karen. But in this context as well, the 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 Conservatives had a plan that, that gave money to families and then it was replaced by the Canada Child Benefit. If the Conservatives get back in, what happens to the Canada Child Benefit? Does it we stay have, or is it gone? We have said that we will continue with the Canada Child Benefit. We'll continue to make sure that it is tax-free, just like the Liberals did. We had introduced programs that were universal like that before, and we'll continue doing that. But at the end of the day, it's affordability for families. So we can talk about all the money being invested, but families can afford things because we have seen under this government such increases in spending, such increases in taxes. And at the end of the day, families are going without because of some of the mismanagement of our public accounts. Angela, quick final review. Sure, you get a bigger bang for your buck if you provide recreation centers and recreation programs more affordably than if you give tax breaks to people that could afford to shell out the money in the first place. The reason we don't have a child care system is not because the Liberal plan failed, it's because they failed us. They didn't put the money into the system that they promised. If they had, I wouldn't have waited three years to get my daughter into a child care right. spot on a wait list. We'll, we'll have to leave it at that. Thank you all, Karen Vecchio, Angela McEwen, and Mona Forte. Thank you very much. And as I say to all, all candidates, uh, good luck. Thank you. And, uh, we'll talk See you to you again. Take care. Days. <laughs> Take care. Take <laughs> care. Okay. Thank you all. Bye.